Hi guys, Colister here with another Nomco Arcade Long Play. In this video, I will be playing Yokai Dochuki, an action adventure game Nomco made in 1987. This game was a Japan only until Arcade Archives. Advisory warning, this game is a little bit inappropriate. This is definitely not a game for young kids. The game is about a boy named Tarosuke that died in the human world and went to hell. And he's taken on a challenge in the underworld for a chance of having a better fate in the end. He has the ability to spit out fireballs, which he uses to attack monsters as he fights his way through here. So, um, let's get started, shall we? This game is difficult. A lot harder than it looks. You require a lot more than just stage memorization in order to do well in this game. As you destroy enemies, they will drop bags of money that you can pick up, so you can save it for later use. Bags of money also appear as pickups in some of the stages. Well, all the stages, in some parts of them, I should say. There's a little secret right here if you use a charge shot on this big frog here. I'm really glad that the Arcade Archives edition of this game included an English translation. Alright, so, um... <clears throat> Throughout the game, enemies will appear in the air and try to corner you. First, you just have frogs that randomly fall, and you can destroy them just by jumping on them. About as easy as it would be to kill a frog in real life. Not that I can dope that. You shouldn't kill harmless animals, it's extremely bad. However, in this game, they can't hurt you. Then, a bunch more aggressive enemies will appear, and more and more, the longer you survive on one credit. Eventually, you'll get ambushed by enemies that kill you with one hit and take several bullets to destroy. For this reason, I never even attempt to one credit clear this game. After every stage, I purposely game over and start again on a new credit. It doesn't matter much since this game doesn't actually have a score system. Not unless you're playing high score mode. Alright, here's the first boss down here. Tarasuke summons this spirit, and you control it around the screen, and shoot bullets to try and hit the 
guard. The bullets will seek out enemies that are closer to it, though. So you gotta get really close. And using an auto-fire key does obviously make it easier. You can also charge Tarasuke's fireball attack if you hold the down direction on the ground. The way you charge the attack, though, is a little weird because it uncharges if you stand still after releasing down. You can only charge it on the ground, not in the air, not in the water. And if you hold it for too long, it'll backfire and leave you stunned for a few short seconds. Not good. That doesn't help how freaking difficult this game is. This guy's legs sticking out of the mud there. If you use continues and reset the aerial enemies, you'll make the game a lot easier to play through. We got a shop here, where you can buy some useful items. I'll start off with the energy drink, which will increase movement speed. And the triple shot will do until I get enough gold that I can afford the quad shot. You can use an auto-fire key in this game in Arcade Archives to make um, some parts of the game easier. Though, rapid firing does have a limit to how much you can damage an enemy at once. It can still help to kind of stun them, though. There are also enemies that jump, making it harder to land hits on them. Now, believe me, it is extremely easy to take damage in this game on accident. Because while you're moving forward, just trying to get through the game as quickly as possible, it's very easy to run into enemies that spawn right over top you, or to walk into, like, a rolling rock and take damage from those as well. So you have to be very careful. If you see the screen dimming out like that, in certain scenes throughout the playthrough, it means I pause buffered. I make it clear in the descriptions for all of these that I'm not a master player, and I'm just playing these games casually, so people that click on the video can just see the whole game, and see like a whole playthrough. And my commentary also helps to give some strategy tips, and some tidbits about some games you might not have known. This game is very hard, it really is. In fact, I used to hate this game, first playing it on Arcade Archives. I appreciate it just a little bit more now, now that I actually know how the game works. Took a little bit of research to really um, understand this game and how to play. More aggressive enemies that can be destroyed will get you more money after you destroy them than weaker ones would. These ghost-like enemies cannot be destroyed. They disappear after a while. Occasionally, you can have another shop on this stage. I'll go ahead and buy the frog feet now. That's going to be useful for the next stage.
there's a part of the game where if you go up on the left from where I'm at now, I'm gonna go to the right though, you'll come to this fountain where this woman will give you a heart item that completely restores your vitality once you hit zero. Which can be useful if you're daring enough to attempt a one credit clear. Also, fun fact, that woman is naked in the original 1987 cabinet game. They censored it and put a bikini on her in arcade archives, for obvious reasons. Refuse and accept his challenge. Even if you do give him your possessions, he'll still fight you like a boss. Usually. Also, you can damage the guard in the first stage and in this stage in advance by shooting a shot as you descend to where they appear. That was a close one. Again, I'm just gonna get a little bit more extra money and then purposely game over. And start on a continue. enough money to buy the quad shot, so I'll go ahead and get that now. This is important to know also, if you're going to use an auto-fire key, you cannot auto-fire while you're swimming on the surface of water, for whatever reason. So like here, I have to do pure mashing. There are also some parts of the game where a certain air-based enemy can appear regardless of how long you survive on a credit. Gotta watch out for rolling rocks. They can corner you easily. These skeletons jump as soon as you shoot, so you have to aim very carefully and outsmart them. There are a couple of different routes that you can go on this stage. This is the way I go. We got some demons that shouldn't arrow at you, and ones that latch onto you and make you slow down, until you shake them off. Kill these demons to get 10,000 gold packs. 
I was reckless in the recording for this playthrough and forgot completely that I needed 30,000 gold. So, I had to go back and do some grinding. It's important to rescue the turtle in this stage. I'm guessing you'd have to fight that boss if you didn't do so. Put bikini tops on these little mermaids in the arcade archives version of the game. Because, you know. you if you're daring enough to open Pandora's box, which is from an Egyptian folktale. Whether or not you get the $10,000 in money, or if it trolls you and turns you into an old man, is actually randomly decided for each playthrough. I think the Pandora's box is Egyptian, I'm not entirely sure. Alright, starting a new credit up, we're gonna start by visiting the shop here. And we're going to buy the consumable food item. This restores your vitality by some after your vitality runs completely out. So you can still go a little bit longer before Tarasuke dies. The juice and soup items recover your vitality as soon as you buy them. That's for people that are daring enough to one credit clear the game. 
or attempt to one credit clear the game. There's also an option that you can play with, that you can turn on or off in this game called Toggle Hellfire. Which will cause columns of fire to appear in certain parts of the stage. It has a tendency to flicker. You want to use charged shots against these big and bunk like enemies. Some of the cloud platforms drag you to the side a little bit if you stand still on them. And if you press jump while you're at the very corner of the cloud platforms, Tarasuke will not actually jump, so you have to be very careful while crossing these. Wait for the wisp to expose itself, and be extra careful jumping along the rocks it shoots out. It's invincible until it exposes itself. That's the first of a required three different items we need to look for. Here's where we're gonna get the second of these designated treasures. Avoiding damage here can be very hard. the boss to get you the third and final. You have to wait for a certain part of the tree to expose itself and then for it to attack you, and then shoot the charge shot to damage. The screen also flashes after this boss is defeated. Epilus start a new credit from here, so the final stage isn't impossible. You see that red enemy with the flames encircling it? Those appear after you survive a while on one credit. They kill you with one hit, and they take several bullets to destroy. 
That's why it's virtually impossible to one credit clear the game, unless you're a master player. I'm gonna buy another consumable food item before I proceed. Then that'll be all. You see the green one strangle you, which slows you down and makes you drop your money as well, it looks like. This guy doesn't let you pass unless you've defeated the three bosses within the stage. stage left to go. This is the judgment stage where Buddha is waiting for um, anybody that takes on this challenge to prove their worth and have a chance of changing their fate, basically. Your goal is to have Tarasuke go to heaven. Now, in order to do that, you have to beat stage 5 without killing any enemies or taking any money. If you do those, his fate will be less than pleasant. If you kill enemies without taking money, he will return to the human world. If you take money without killing any enemies, he'll go to either the demon world or the beast world. And if you do both, he'll go to hell. And believe me, avoiding the money and refraining from killing enemies in this stage is borderline unbearable. Especially since there are parts where these gray faces automatically appear, regardless of credit progression. And climbing the clouds at the end of the stage is literally 
a shade from being impossible. You have to be really persistent in order to actually do it. So even though this is a fast-paced game, playing it all the way through for me usually takes over an hour. We're just gonna go through what looks like lava here. Believe me, it's unbearable to try to climb these cloud platforms. And these enemies are extremely annoying. I bought that food item for a reason. And if it wasn't for it, I could have lost easily. Alright, so there's Buddha, Japanese god, basically. Then your performance in the fifth stage is reviewed, and Tarasuke's fate is decided. He went up to heaven. Because we didn't kill any enemies or take any of the money. Which makes sense if you think about it, because both of those show greed, basically. V for victory sign, if you're paying attention. Established ending. Using the Nintendo Switch's capture function, I saved video clips of the other bad endings. So you can see them. This is the human world ending. This is the demon world ending. This is the Beast World ending. And finally, the hell ending. Alright, so that was Yokai Dochuki, one of the most difficult arcade games by Namco to figure out by far. I still got a few more Namco arcade long plays to do up ahead, so stay tuned for those. And also consider subscribing if you like Mega Man or like Crash Bandicoot and Spyro. I'm doing some retro Nintendo long plays up ahead as well. Pokemon, different franchises along those lines. Because I'll be taking those on as well. So until my next upload, I am Colster, the Master of Ponage. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in my next video from here. Bye.